So here's the plumbing for the toilet feed line. These lines have to be completely dry. If there's water in there, you'll have a hard time soldering it. So this is just the dry fit. I need to pull all that apart, flux everything up, and put it all back together, and then I'm going to solder it. But before I do that, there's a valve that goes on top of the line that's right uh, above the floor. I'm going to take that piece out, solder that valve on. This is the little uh, cutter that I use. It's like the smallest one I could find. I've used it for this entire project. I don't know, it cost about seven or eight bucks. And uh, it's nice because it's so small you can get up in those tight areas and get be able to run this around your pipe. So this is the extension that goes up above the floor. And I had to, of course, cut it to length from a longer piece of pipe. But once you cut it, the cutter creates a burr inside this lip. So they have special tools for this. I don't have one, so I just use a utility knife with a crummy old blade. It's dull, but you just go down through and I I cut that burr off of the inside of the tube. And then what I like to do, uh, again, they have tools for this that I don't own. Well, I don't have one. I just use sandpaper. I just kind of smooth off the end. Make sure there's no no burrs on the outer edge. And then uh, you see how the pipe's oxidized on the outside? I just take my sandpaper, wrap it around the end, and put some pressure on it with my fingers as I twist it. I usually go both directions. Do that a few times. That's what it looks like when it's ready to flux. But uh, every fitting needs to be cleaned on the inside. So you need to get one of these little brushes. Mine's getting kind of wore out, but you just go in there and clean out the inside and it scrapes off the oxidation, oxidation and puts a nice shine inside. So then when you flux in there and put your pipe together, that's the key to this soldering. Dry pipes that don't have any water in there because it cools it down and doesn't allow it to get hot enough for the solder to flow around the joint. So good cleaning, good fluxing, and uh, dry. And, and you should have a pretty nice joint. And then I bought these uh, valves. If you ever replace a valve, my personal recommendation is to go with a, a quarter turn valve, a ball valve instead of those screw valves that screw in two or three turns before they're loosened or opened or closed. This one is just a quarter of a turn closed, quarter of a turn open. There's a ball in there with a hole in it and that, that's, that's why they call it a ball valve. But they're really nice. When it's lined up with the pipe, it's open. When it's across the pipe, it's closed. They are about eight bucks. Eight bucks a valve, but totally worth it in my opinion if you're going to go through this. So anyway, this happens to be a uh, solder on valve. So I'm going to get it um, fluxed, slip that back together and solder it up. And then there'll be a screw on fitting here that'll go up with a flexible hose to the, to the toilet. So here's how I flux. I use a q-tip. Now they have brushes. Brush might be better so you don't get fibers on the uh, pipe, but just take you some flux and run it all the way around. And, and get your uh, elbow or whatever, your, whatever fitting you're putting on there. And this is nice with the q-tip because you can flux the inside that fluxed up well. Other side. I like to take my sandpaper and sand flat on the ends. 
because when you solder, the solder will flow around that joint. And it's nice if it, if it just flows nice and smooth around the edge of that. So anyway, that's what I do. And then you just fit the two pieces together and make sure that they're pressed in all the way. So I've just got this setting on a brick. Probably a lot better way to hold it, but I'm going to start to heat this up without burning my camera. And this is a pretty good piece of metal, so it's going to take quite a bit of heat. I'm putting the heat right at the tip of that blue flame, right at the base of this uh, cup or uh, valve. And then uh, periodically, I'll just take the tip of my solder. And, oh, I thought that was going to happen. All right, let me. Uh, well, see if I can hold it with my hand. It doesn't get too hot. Just periodically going to touch the solder on there <clears throat> and see if it melts. If it doesn't melt, I just continue to heat. I just keep doing that until that solder will actually melt. Once it melts and it's flowing, then you're good. You can run that solder on there. There, okay, it's starting to melt. So I remove the heat, continue to melt the solder. It stops melting, I put more heat on it. Turn it a little bit if you need to. All right, I think we're good. And then I'm gonna take my cold damp rag maybe it's getting hot and uh, put it in my rag don't burn yourself when you do this but I'm gonna basically not to only cool it off but to uh, wipe off the excess flux is the point for the rag and the only reason I care about cooling it off is so I can handle it. It's still pretty warm. But if you see that, if I get it wiped off here and I'll show you. Then I have a good joint all the way around. And I should be in good shape. So that's ready to go upstairs and come down through the hole so I can connect it to the rest of my uh, pipe. Now, I do have a pretty good clump of solder right here. I may try to even that out just because this is going to be above the floor and be able to be seen. But honestly, it's uh, it's fine. It's not hurting the joint or anything. All right, after soldering. Well, that was a tight spot. Kind of tough to get to. But the water is on and uh, no leaks. I just have to make sure now that I don't accidentally turn this valve on. That's half inch pipe. And they make a fancy chrome ring to go around this. But uh, I don't have one. It's a drive to the store and that's I don't need anything else at this point. So I decided to go ahead and install it without it. See you guys on the next one.